Hello, my name is André Barata and I would like to welcome you to the dedicated session of the Window Watchdog Timer from the STM32L4 MOOC training. Watchdog timers in general are used to recover the microcontroller from software anomalies. These software anomalies causes the program to abandon its normal sequence and hanging in inesperate states. This self-recovering feature is particularly useful in applications which cannot be monitored by a human operator or which cannot wait for the operator to reboot the system to meet the uptime requirement for the products. WWDG stands for Window Watchdog. This peripheral is named after its unique feature of just allow being refreshed within a defined time window. The objectives of for this session are to learn how to set up Window Watchdog in the STM32 CubeMX and to refresh it in the code. We will also learn how to identify the root problem that caused the program to hang. To accomplish these objectives we will need to go through four steps. The first will be to configure the Window Watchdog and the GPIOs in the STM32 CubeMX. We will generate the code and already in the system workbench for STM32, we will refresh the window watchdog on a regular basis. The third step will be to simulate a software failure to verify the recovery mechanism that we are trying to implement. And the fourth and the last, we will include the verification method to check if the window watchdog reset flag was set. The window watchdog is clocked from the APB clock bus, which is derived directly from the system clock. This means whenever MCU is in a low power mode except for sleep mode, there is no need to refresh the window watchdog as it is not being clocked. While using the window watchdog, it is important to refresh it before entering the low power mode. In fact, this is a good practice as we are preventing it to reach its limit during the wake-up phase of the MCU and therefore preventing unwanted resets. Here we can see the window watchdog block diagram. The system reset is triggered when the most significant bit of the counter is cleared. There is also a system reset whenever the window watchdog is refreshed too early. This means in situations where the counter is refreshed while the window value is smaller than the counter value. As you might recall from the previous slide, the window watchdog is clocked directly from the APB bus and then goes through a fixed prescaler and a programmable prescaler. To calculate the maximum window watchdog timeout, we would have to consider 127, the maximum value that the counter can assume. Uh, minus uh, four zero in hexadecimal, we would realize that we have 64 ticks before the reset. By computing the default values on the window watchdog timeout formula, we can see that the maximum timeout is roughly 65 milliseconds. For the purpose of our application, we are going to refresh it every 22 milliseconds. Before switching to the STM32 CubeMX to start generating code, we will take a moment to analyze the Window Watchdog hands-on flowchart. This flowchart will make our implementation easier and probably clearing the doubts you were having. The program starts on the reset state and we will proceed to initialize our peripherals. We will verify if the Window Watchdog reset flag is set since this is the first time we are running the program, it should be cleared. Then we will, we will enter an infinite loop where an LED is being toggled with a periodicity lower than the max timeout value of the window watchdog timer, which means that in every cycle we will be able to re refresh the window watchdog. So, the infinite loop will go on and on until a moment where a user would press a button and this will trigger an external interrupt. In this service call routine, we will attempt to write an invalid address which will lead the MCU to generate a hard fault. 
if when the watchdog would not be implemented the, the MCU would get stuck here until someone with externally resets it. After the Window Watchdog timeout is met, the program will reset itself, and after initialization of the peripherals once more, we, we would check for the Window Watchdog reset flag, and in this case, the flag should be set, which will indicate that the system got reset during the, its ex execution. A red LED would be turned on, which indicates the user that the system was reset. So, without further ado, let's launch our STM32 CubeMX, let's configure the window watchdog, let's configure the GPIOs to help us generating and toggle LEDs, On during our code we will refresh the window watchdog timer, on the service call routine, as you recall, we will need to generate a failure and we will need to make our verification if the window watchdog reset flag was set and if yes, the red LED should be turned on. With the STM32 CubeMX open, we will start a new project. We will type the part number STM32 L476VG. We will start a new project. We will start by initializing the GPIOs connected to the LEDs, which in this case will be P8 for the green LED and PB2 for the red LED. We are going also to initialize PA0 for the external interrupt, so whenever we would press the, the central button of the joystick in our discovery board, we will enter the interrupt mode. We will need to activate the window watchdog. In our clock configuration, we are going to leave it everything in the standard configuration. Uh, now we go to the configuration tab. GPIOs, we are going to leave it in default. In the NVIC, we need to activate the external interrupt line. On the window watchdog configuration, we will set the down counter to its maximum value. So for 7 bits, this will mean 127. Since we won't make use of the window feature in this example, we will also set it to its maximum. The prescaler, we will leave it as default. We will apply, and now before generating the code, we will need to save our project again and give it an appropriate name. Do never forget to, to select the proper IDE, which in our case continues to be the system workbench for STM32. So now we are ready to generate the code. Then we will just need to open the project to automatically open our system workbench for the STM32. After the code is generated by STM32 CubeMX, we can see that all our peripherals were initialized. In the GPIO configuration, we can see that the clocks have been enabled. PA0 is defined as input combined with external interrupt capability and sensitive to rising edge. The two other GPIOs have been configured as output to drive the LEDs. Window Watchdog configuration has been configured according to the STM32 CubeMX input parameters. We will start by toggling the green LED to signalize that we are in the infinite loop. After, we will add 22 milliseconds of delay before refreshing the window watchdog counter. 
The HAL window watchdog refresh function has only one input parameter, which is the pointer to the device handler. We will include a verification to be performed every time the program runs, which, which checks if the window watchdog flag was set. If the flag was set, the red LED will be turned on, meaning a program reset happened caused by the window watchdog. To finalize this step, we will clear all reset flags. Now we need to go to the interrupt handle which can be found in source stm32l4xxit. On the bottom of the file we will find xt0 handler and we will write to an invalid address. Writing to an invalid address will result on the hard fault exception. After building and launching the program, you will see the green LED toggling endlessly, till the moment you press the joystick center key and the red LED will also be turned on. This will notify the user for a Window Watchdog system reset. Thank you for watching.